Perez. Walter makes a run ahead of it. Burkamp suddenly changed pace through the centre. It's Burkamp! That's magnificent! The move, and then this, which left Dabby's ass totally stranded. I'm looking at the wrong screen again, aren't I? <laughs> it's seven, so I'm looking at the other monitor going, we haven't started yet. Oh, there we are. Hello, and welcome to Burkat Wonderland. Unlike the dodo, we are not dead yet. We're nearly, we're nearly there. The final few nails are going in the coffin, but we're not quite there yet. I've, got li- I've actually prepared this of a list of questions. With me this afternoon, this morning, or wherever about in, sometimes it matters where about in the universe you are. Maybe you don't have a sun, so you don't know if it's daytime or nighttime. It's Sophie, <laughs> my third favourite Greek person. Third? Hold on a second. I don't know any other can't Greek be, Harry can't only... be ahead of me. Harry can't no. be ahead of me. Oh, Harry's 15th. I know two Greek people, you and Harry. Saying. Yeah, I can't put you first because you, you'll get a big head about it and then you'll have to buy yourself a new hat and then all the uh, all oh, the Scottish will go, where's the hat? Danny, <laughs> I'm sweating like swine under this thing. I can't wait for it to be over for so many reasons. But this hat, as you can imagine, it's getting a little toastier in California right now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And and if I'm, I'm supposed to be home for the Wolves game. So, uh, you know, I'm hoping Did that... Did you pay I 15 can... grand for the ticket? No, <laughs> oh, is, no, I did not. <laughs> I know somebody who knows somebody who paid 12 grand for their ticket for that game, and then they've gone back wow. to the person and said, I want my money back. And I said, No, you're not, you're not having any of it back. You're a mug. Oh wow. my god, well, some... I mean, this is craziness, isn't it? That you know, this is actually happening, and people are paying that amount. Well, they were um, not anymore. Well, not anymore, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. We don't know, Danny. We don't know. Well, I'm Anything's a believer. <laughs> I'm just like Justin Justin Bieber. I'm a believer, Bieber. Believer. I think it's yes. some of those. Let's say hello to some of the people that have bothered to turn up. Who have we got here? We've got hmm. Paul, not Neil, not Neil. He is there. Hello, Paul. And Mr. Waffles. In, uh, he's, he's, I uh, love he's, it. He's all beardy. Um, Brady's Banana, someone who I saw. I think he was chatting to you the other night on Twitter. I do love Double yeah. B. Uh, Jim Eaves, not Greaves, uh, Boy 10 in uh, wintry South Africa. Boy 10. I think Boy he said 10 it was raining is... the other day. I'm going to South Africa in June. Oh, oh it's mm. very, very nice. Um, Sean's mum has got some friends that uh, are from there. They live in yeah. the UK and they uh, they live at the back of the Top Gear track where it used to be. And they're always back and forth from South Africa because they're bloody minted. That's very uh, nice. My uncle lives there. My mum's brother uh, lives in Jayburg. Are you going to go see some football? Um, I'm going to discover. I'm, def- I'm definitely going to do a little safari thing. Oh, Ajax, know. Cape Town. Yeah, in my championship winning beanie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. that J-Rob is there. Tom Andrew. Stan the man in. <laughs> He's got, that's what I say every time. It's from sunny Vancouver. Is it sunny? Uh, Deke rains there. a lot. Rains it, a lot there. It does, unfortunately. Deke, who does all the post-game shows with me, and they're now best part of two hours because neither of us can shut up. Our very <laughs> own Nikki Wilson. Nick has arrived. Who can I ban? Excellent. <laughs> uh, Melvin, a fellow podcaster, it does some one. Melvin is a lovely man. He does some great podcasts on. He'll pick a season chronologically and i was meant to go mm-hmm. and do one but then i had to have some time away and, mm. and so yeah they're really really good um i think he does them on richard's channel which is over and over and over again i'm sure Lovely. that's it nick says god save the king and quite rightly so nick yes absolutely no disagreement from me there have you got <laughs> <laughs> steady on <laughs> That's, that's more serious than a yellow card. <laughs> Avon, not Teddington, is there. I am present, but I'm doing other things. Well, there's no problem with that. I'm present, Who else have I'm we got down here? Mr. Bob Lex. We all know Mr. Bob Lex. How are you doing? Who is that picture? It's a great of? name. I, Avatar. I saw someone else use that the other day. Is that an MP or something? You know, um, I just decided that I'm going to give an, an award out to Ooh. the best handle of anyone I've seen this season in any chat room of any podcast. 
Yes. Give out a Kybury Squad clock end coin to someone. The entire collection, actually. Oh, your Zenith coins. I've seen they are very, very popular. They've just had some new ones. I was looking at their website. They brought out some new ones, haven't they? Yeah, the clock end coin. It's so sexy. Limited edition. Mm, Limited edition. You're going to want to get your hands on that. And you know what? For Burkham Wonderland users, use um, code HS15 and get your 15% off. All right. Tell them Sophie sent you. It will and hold nothing, no code, weight, nothing, but just tell them anyway. <laughs> if you put the code ABW in, you'll get charged an extra 50%. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do it. <laughs> They'll find out where you live and poo in your flower beds. Uh, Matt what? D'Souza was there. Good evening. Has Shira calmed down yet? No. <laughs> oh, that was <laughs> glorious, <laughs> wasn't it? Just gold. <laughs> it's a bitter man. Sai is there. Um, hashtag Sai out. Um, right. So as we've got Sophie for, uh, we're going to talk for an hour. So far, we've wasted five minutes and we were seven minutes late. I mean, that, that is just ridiculous. I'm going to go straight in. I'm going to go knees knees first and Ooh. give you this amazing stat. Now, I, I try, tried to read it out on the last podcast and I made an absolute pig's ear of it. Now, where have I put it? Really? You're so good with stats. I steal stats from you, from you our can, show, as you know. You can use these. They are beautiful. Oh. There have been 30 previous Premier League seasons. That, there is no argument. With That's our current great. 81 points, we would have won six of those titles already. Wow, what seasons would that have been? I can tell you. If we win our well, last three games, we'll have 90 points, and that would have won 21 of the last 30 Premier League seasons. Wow. Is, uh, I will... I will send you those. And I've got a little, a little thing here. Where is it? It is there. Boom. So the seasons that we'd have won it already, 92-93, Man United mm-hmm. got 84 points. 94-95, Blackburn got 89. And they were 42-game seasons. That's four That's more games. crazy. 95-96, we'd have won it. Then Man United got 82. 96-97, Man United got 75. Arsenal's Se- first double season, we only got 78. Was the 75 next season, the lowest? That's craziness to win the league with 75 points. And it wasn't even there was that many teams then that were decent. No. It would have been Arsenal, Blackburn, and Man United. And then we'd have won it in 98, 99. Uh, Man United had 79. We'd have won it in 2000, 2001. We'd have won it in uh, 2000. Where were we up to? 80 points. No, we wouldn't have won it that one. Uh, where was the other one? There was one quite recently. Oh, there you go. 2010, 11. Man United had 80 points. We've got what better about the, Le- the Leicester season we would have won? Right. Leicester, uh, Leicester season, no, they had 81. And oh. we've got eight. Oh, we have here. We've got 81. Yeah, yeah we yeah, would yeah. have probably won that. And they've got a goal difference of 32, I think that is. Yes. And ours at the moment is, what, 44? So we'd have won it then. Wow. It's only in the last one, two, three, four, five, six seasons that teams are regularly winning the league with 90 plus points. When we that's... say teams, we just mean Manchester City and Liverpool, everyone. <laughs> and uh, this this one is another one that I've gr- that I've grafted together from, from Wikipedia. This is for people who say that Arsenal haven't had a great season. Hold on, get rid of that. The top one that's up to game thirty three, where we lost to Man City. How look at only three 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 league game three uh, match day weekends were we not top of the Premier League. That is beautiful. That should be on a T-shirt. Now you look at the bottom one, 98. We were oh. only top of the Premier League six times, six days. And 02, we were only top seven times. I mean, the Invincible, obviously, we were top a lot more because we were fantastic. But what, what do you think? What does that make you think about the people that, that complain about this season when you hear about stats like that? Look, I understand that we've complained over the last few years, and rightly so. Arsenal fans have had every right to have a little bit of a bitch and moan about things. This season is one of those that I just don't understand the people who want to be right. Why do you want to be right and not succeed? You know, why do you want to be right about something negative? Youngest team in the Premier League last season, we almost got there and didn't. And I think we've learned hugely from that. Had we come back this season and totally fallen on our asses, then you could say there's no growth. Where's the evolution under Mikel Arteta? You know, all of these questions that some of us have had, you know, before last season, but it's completely unfair. And I don't think you have a leg to stand on to look at this season and actually say, we've choked, we've bottled, or we failed. This is an incredible, look at that, six draws. Six draws. And up until 
City, what, three losses? Yeah. This is a team that was eighth, eighth, fifth. Now we're challenging for the title and we're the only team. I don't care if Chelsea have fallen off. I don't care if United have Spurs. I don't care. We've had to Liverpool. We've had to do what we've had to do and play who's in front of us, just like everybody else. And I think it's been a hugely evolutionary season. Now, Danny, what we need to do is keep doing that, right? Last season, we went close, Champions League. This season, we get, we've gone close for the title. Now, next season, you want to start winning things. You want to start doing this over and over and over again. That is the biggest challenge for Arsenal, is to do it consistent, consistently and be competitive year after year after year. It is indeed. And give you some kind of, that's some, I agree with you 100% then. Some people are never happy unless they're unhappy. And yeah. uh, some of those, are little, we've known some of those people for years. And it's almost like people will, we were talking about podcast numbers before. I mean, we're here to entertain you. Numbers make no difference to how many shows either of our podcasts do. We, we, just, mm-hmm. we just love chatting football. But I was mentioning that, that one of the highest ones we've had was when Liverpool smashed us 4-0 the first game of the season with 13,000 people watch that but then we could have we could have the double winning side come on and all do a five-hour interview with him and then people wouldn't watch it because they're not interested but you mm-hmm. get smashed oh hello everybody's there everybody loves it and hopefully that fan base is turning around you've got the Ashburton Grove boys the Ashburton army and things like that they're they are regenerating uh, the the Arsenal fan base and livening stuff up and showing that Arsenal are not a team that uh that settle for being rubbish and people moan about the whole mm. time. We have a team that we can have expectations for, and Arteta is delivering us those expectations and I think at the moment we're two years ahead of where we should be, aren't we? Danny, can I just touch on something you've said there about Ashburton Army in particular? Because I had a did a show with Tom Canton, and if you've been living under a rock, you you should watch Tom's show, The Goon and Talk TV. Um, he's one of the quality broadcasters out there, I believe, in the Arsenal community. And he's going places, and he's really just done a phenomenal job. And um, we talked about you know, the different styles of shows. And there's an abundance of Arsenal podcasts out there. And depending on your mood and your flavor, you can pick whichever one you want. That's the beautiful thing about choice. As like the Ashburton Army have had a positive effect for fans in stadium and the culture that they're trying to build for a new generation. Because let's face it, Danny, if, if if our team goes on and wins the title this season, it will be their 89. It will be their Invincibles. It will be this new generation's moment. And I would love to see this young generation see our team win something because it is so special. The experience is unlike anything you'll have as a football fan winning the title. It's so, it's so unbelievable. And with that same token, I think there's shows out that have done similarly in the YouTube universe, the same way Ashburton Army have positively affected the experience of what it is to be an Arsenal fan, whether you're in that stadium or what they project through their content, the videos fans share afterwards. So, you know, our shows do much better when we win, actually, versus when we lose. It's bizarre, and I think maybe that's because generally we've tried to be a very positive platform. Yeah, of course, you know, I've been very critical of Mikel Arteta, uh, along the way. But, you know, there are pe- people who've been critical of Wenger, of Emery, of Freddie Lundberg, of uh, of uh, of Xhaka. You know, that's what being a fan is all about. This season, I feel like coming together collectively has been a really cool si- thing. So I just wanted to touch on the Ashburton Army thing, because I do think there are people online who are doing similarly positive things in a different way. And yes. I totally avoided your question because I just wanted to address that. Real quick. <laughs> now that's important because they are the future. We are we're we're, we're the, called us the dinosaurs of the uh, well I am the dinosaurs of sporting Arsenal. When you, I've been supporting them for what, forty years, something like that, and these these people have only been doing it for maybe 10, 12 years, and they're the future of uh, of, of of the Arsenal fan base. And we're, now that we are brilliant again, then we are mm-hmm. going to get you more. Like my two nephews, both you support Arsenal, both now support Man City. I was talking to a delivery driver who was, was a lovely African bloke. We were having a chat about football. I think he was Ghanaian. I said, oh, what team do you support? He said, Barcelona. I said, what Premier League team? He said, Man City. I said, do you ever watch them either of them play? He said, no. And I thought, well, there you go. That, that just sums up why people are supporting Man City. And they can't even get people going to the stadiums. 
It's uh, I was gonna, yeah. I mean, I got killed after um, a Sky Sports appearance because I not by our fans, by City fans, because I said something. And Danny, you've been a, a football fan a long time, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. And respectfully, I said, Manchester City are a smaller club doing the bigger things in the Premier League. They're Manchester United are a massive club doing small things in the Premier League. We've a massive club doing small things in the Premier League for years. Liverpool, massive club, recovered, won, you know, but City are not a bigger club than any three of those clubs. But they are doing massive things, winning trophies. You know, maybe they'll meet, re reach the promised land in the Champions League this year. We don't know. But I think people mistake the fact that we are a big club versus the fact that we haven't won the big one in a long time and we continually fail in Europe. But City fans did not appreciate that at all. And it's a very touchy subject for them. They get very defensive when we suggest they can't sell out their stadium or they're a smaller club than Arsenal. I mean, I think they are. Would you agree? Uh, well, I have this ready. Um, this sums up <laughs> Manchester City people. 2001, relegated from the Premier League. 98, relegated from Division 1. 96, relegated from the Premier League. 87, relegated from the top tier. 83, relegated from the top tier. 8, 63, relegated from the top tier. 50, 38, 26, 09, and then 1902, relegated from the top <laughs> tier. That is not a team that historically are a big club. Now, in, in the early 70s, they were a decent side. Yeah, they and were. In the early eight, in, I think 1980, they made it to an FA Cup final. But this, this is the facts, people. Get this on a T-shirt. Put it on a banner. Fly it out your window. Print it out and, and send it to Pep and say, this is the club <laughs> that, that you are now doing it. And one day they'll get bored of it, the owners. And when they get bored of it, Man City won't be out of finance. All of the, the, the stadium, the wages, the players, the training ground, all the other millions. They've just bought my club, Palermo, in Italy. They've added it to their harem of, of, of clubs. Is that, is that, what's that? Wow. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Yeah, uh, is that yeah, a dress a or a, the, I've got harem shorts. No, yeah, am I thinking about? Maybe. I think it means a collection of something. Yeah, anyway. yeah, a collection. Anyway. Yeah, so they've yeah. added it to their, 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 um, their collection of clubs. And I think, well, now I can't support Palermo. And I've supported them since the mid-80s when they were a fourth-tier Italian side. And it's very, very annoying. But when the, one day they will get bored and they will move away because once the uh, the, the astroturfing is done and once the job is done, they're going to walk away and go, well, that's all the, the blood off of our hands, but we're not going to go down that. That's the entire <laughs> no, no. of its own. You know... Um... You know what's interesting is uh, someone's uh, a size just put it in the chat. Chelsea, like, be careful, right? I was thinking about this. I was thinking I want to do a show with this, and I think you'd be good, Magic Tom, like people like like that to talk about this because I was in the kitchen making my muffin, and um, quite right, and. Uh, I was thinking the Cronkies, I've done two or three shows about this and kind of prodded and pushed a little bit in the conversation to make our listeners really kind of review the Cronkies and what they've done. And there's folks like Guna Russ who will continually tell you, no, 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 so if 2018, you know, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it. However, I think there's this very crazy thing happening in the Premier League, a little bit like in American sports. When the owner becomes notorious or the owner becomes a celebrity or, and I think you know what I'm talking about, the manager, Pep Guardiola is Manchester City. He walks away from that club. Who knows what will happen to that club from a stylistic a point of or view. Something like that. Or they'll try and get Mikel Arteta. You know, they've earmarked Patrick Vieira, who I think is proving that he's maybe, you know, not the best manager in the world. Okay. Um and, and you're seeing that with United and the Glazers. You're seeing that, you know, um, with Abramovich and how Chelsea have fallen apart once that figurehead, the money, all of that, you know. And this is why I say to Arsenal fans, sometimes be careful what you wish for in terms of how we run the club, how we operate, what the Cronkies give, what they don't. And, I, and, you know, like the Dallas Cowboys haven't won a Super Bowl since the three they won in the 90s. And they've had so much talent. The owner just can't get out of the way of building that team back to where it needs to be. So I think we need to be really careful about what we're asking for as fans 
and looking at this year in particular as great examples of the fact that, you know what, we've got a solid foundation, we've got owners who are fiscally responsible, they've hired the right executive team. Uh, finally, we're at that point, you know, where we have a manager in place that could be there for a few years if we if we give him the tools and the resources to succeed. So ownership, I think, is a really big deal in the Premier League now. And when you look at what Newcastle might might be bringing to the table as well, you know, you ask yourself, is there a reason why some of these teams, you know, and the points difference is the way it is and, and all that stuff. But notoriety, I think we need to be really careful about that. I kind of went off on one there, but I think ownership is really mm. important. And I don't think we give our owners enough credit these days when we look at what else is happening in the Premier League. We dodged a bullet with um, um, Asmanov. What's his name? Yeah. Usmanov, was, yeah. Usmanov, that was uh, that. If, just imagine if he'd have had owned Arsenal at the time, he would have shot. He would have had a fire sale and sold us to whoever yeah. would have given him the money, so he could he could get it and get out of uh, wherever he was, wherever he was living. It's, I think the Cronkies are doing a great job, and Edu's doing a great job. But I know, and you know, and we all know, this summer, if on the first day of the transfer window we haven't bought ten players, there will be pit, people putting up pictures of Edu having a barbecue, going, "Do your job." annoys me <laughs> Does it i hope out. he you know what i want to see this summer mm. i want to see um by the way melvin on that basis sophie long live daniel levy no because we've given our manager the tools to blow it up rebuild it they've given yeah. him the keys to the kingdom he's ain't he ain't giving no one the keys to his little kingdom no he isn't but that is funny um i want to see our manager i want to see our players before they come on tour here of course I want to see them on yachts. I want to see them enjoying their life. I want to see them putting their feet up. I want to see Saka resting. I want to see them having fun. They've worked their asses off to give us entertainment. They're paid handsomely for it, of course, but they sacrifice a lot to do it as well. And I want to see them go off and enjoy themselves. Let rip. I it's want your to time see off. I want to see Benny Blanco on the beach covered in ladies. That's what I want to see, putting his feet on. <laughs> well, he's engaged now, so we want him. We want him to be with his lady, right? <laughs> Funny, I spoke to, I spoke about Benny Blanco yesterday to someone who will. I'll reveal. Maybe oh, yes. like, I don't that's, know. It's a very the, special interview catch. that we did. Yeah, that's a very and, good catch. I'm, I'll be watching that. And let's just say Benjamin Y is spoken about like we're in such amazing colors um by this person it was really great to hear um and when's that on tomorrow i'm gonna splice it up a little and tease everyone and um mm. put it out bit by bit um, but it's a really special conversation and a unique one um that i would say we haven't seen on any podcast uh, this this season so mm. i'll leave it at that for now oh you tease Rancid Pumpkin says, come on, Danny, we didn't dodge a bullet of Usmanov. We could be in the same position as Everton, winning the championship <laughs> next season. Who doesn't want that? I mean, silverware is silverware. You can't you can't knock it. Cliff says hello. Um, Loki makes a good point. Man United went 26 years, Liverpool went 29, and Spurs 61 years and counting without the title, <laughs> which is very good. Um, our, our friend uh, Johnson, uh, James Johnson, who has got his own channel. Oh, James, James Johnson, and I would do it. He's got the greatest hair in Arsenal podcasting. Um, my mum used to see him and go, oh, who's the big Susie with the lovely hair? I don't know if that was an insult <laughs> or whether that was praise, but she used to see his hair and like it. He's, he's put, Sheikh Mansour is the Abu Dhabi Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great um, documentary, by the way. Uh, James, find him, LL Cool James, uh, oh, 91. Yeah. You can find following. him and then you'll see his links to his stuff. And he does stuff on... He, he appears on our show. I know he's been on the same old Arsenal. He does um, a whole bunch of good good bits and bobs for a, a few, and he has his own as well. Yes, and we have had him on here a couple of times. And uh, James, if you're there, put your um, put your link to your channel in in the the uh, chat. Uh, Nick is there, and I can see it. So if it, I don't think it will block. <laughs> you can put links to whatever you want in there. I went and did more digging. Right, so I like Man, it when you uh, dig. <laughs> Man City have. They've beaten us. Uh, where, where did I put the? I've put it in the right place, but I moved it around. They've beaten us. Sounds 
About They've right. Beaten <laughs> us 15 out of the last 16 times we've played us. Since November 2017 to the last game, it's 5.5 years. And they've beaten us 15 times in five and a half years. To put it into context, the, the, the length of time going backwards, you'd have to go for Man City to beat us 15 times. They'd have to go back to the 24th of April 1976 to the 23rd of April 2017. 41 years for them to beat us 15 times. And now they've beaten us 15 times in five and a half years. Wow. That, that sums it up, doesn't it? I mean, most of the wow. time they were in, in, in two, the, the, the second tier or third tier of English football. But to go 41 years to do what they've done in five and a half years, that just shows how partly how bad we've been, but it's partly how, how amazing they have been. And you can't take that away from them. You, can you can't take that away. And this is, then Danny, it's such a brilliant point. By the way, I love that stat. I'm going to have to share that with Kev. And, but, and you've also given me a great idea. We'll go in half and half. I yeah. love your stats becoming T-shirts. Maybe no Laguna. <laughs> we'll reach out to Stephen and see if he can help us with that one. Well, hold that um, thought. My favourite T-shirt ever is Joe Rogan. Do you ever watch Joe Rogan? Uh, am I allowed to say that live on air, whether or not yeah, I watch him or not? Him doesn't mean I believe in him. <laughs> he's, he's, he once had an, an orange tree in his back garden. He had a plumber come out to do something. And uh, he said, oh, I've got an, an orange tree back there. He said, if you want to go. He said, yeah, you, um, you can go and take yourself, have, have a couple of oranges. He went back there and took 12 oranges. So Joe Rogan made a tree T-shirt with a, an orange tree underneath 12 fucking oranges. <laughs> <laughs> like, go on, carry on with what you were going to say. Because if I didn't say that, it would leak out of my ears and be a mess. Um, you yeah, know, T-shirts. We... T-shirts, yeah. The one with the um, the wins and losses, I think will be great. I think that would make a really good, just remind people the kind of season we had. Anyway, where yeah. were we? Lower leagues, Man City. We had Sean Goater on the show a couple of seasons ago. He Lovely go, man. And he will score. And Danny, as you know, Goater, yeah. Goatee, um, played in all the leagues for City. The dude was with them for years and talked about the yo-yoing. And he's an ambassador now. He's all part of their coaching team. Um, but he stayed heavily involved in the club. And he and they don't forget. I think some Man City fans have forgotten all of this. It's new money, right? It's how people handle new money versus old money. Um, and they don't remember where they came from. Now you see, because Liverpool won previously and United won previously, we won. We know the pain. Like once mm -hmm. you've stayed at the Four Seasons, Kevin and I say, and you've worn the fluffy slippers and the bathrobe, you do not want to be at the roadside motel walking along a sticky floor trying to get into the bath. It's just not pleasant. And they've kind of forgotten that they were at the Hojos before. And I think Liverpool, Man United and Arsenal fans remember it so badly. They want it so much. So sometimes when they're overzealous or they get, you know, cranky about it, it's because they've been there before and City haven't. You're getting grief over your hat from Paul Neil, not Neil. Neil, not Neil. <sighs> No, not he's Neil. probably thinking I'm a royalist and I've worn it because of the king and he's judging me. I mean, tell me why you think it's rough. I mean, it's the Union Jack. It sells, you know, you know, you put the Union Jack on a pillow or a hat. Anyone will buy it these days. They would yeah. indeed. Yeah, I'd like to know what it's what's rough about it, and then maybe I'll share why I'm wearing it again. <clears throat> uh, what other things have I got here that we can talk about? It's actually about? a cool um, hat. Sod you. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I bought the convertible, I went out and bought about 30 hats. I bought four balaclavas so people can drive around with the roof down at night wearing balaclavas, <laughs> going around, around Huntington and God, Manchester and Cambridge. That wouldn't have worked out well. But I bought loads of furry hats, like little furry pigs and, and goats and things like that, and a cowboy hat and an Aussie hat. And then I drove the car six times, knackered my elbow, and it's been sat on my driveway for the last <laughs> 10 years. So uh, one day I'll get it fixed and sell it. It's under the roof. Everything else works on it. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, Paul said, oh, I see. Nope. From the US. You are usually a stylist. You are I've actually been told icon. if there's any award I would win in the podcast universe, it would probably be for style. Um, sorry you don't like it today, Paul, but I will not take this hat off until the end of the season. That's it. It's just it. Because if you do, we'll get relegated. 
Um, right, question. Now, I've wrote down a few things. How long can Arsenal compete against Newcastle's money as City have beaten us 15 out of 16 games? How long before Newcastle mm. are that strong? What do you think? I think if we buy the right players and we have the right manager, they can spend all the money in the world they want. You know, it hasn't guaranteed United success, has it, lately? All that money they've spent. And the <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so, as we've seen, Liverpool haven't spent as much as City and Chelsea and United, but, you know, they've been able to pull off the Champions League and the league title. They've been smart in their recruitment, their scouting. I say we go poach Brighton's entire scouting team and yes. put them at the Arsenal. Uh, I, I, that's where you have to be smart. Money doesn't guarantee success. Um, and I think that's something that has always been important for us. And I wish, in some ways, Arsenal fans just stop on this money trail. You know, are we going to fork out 120 million for Declan Rice? No. Now, a lot of people think that deal's already been done and it was done. And, you know, this is just rhetoric from West Ham. But the Mudrick saga should give you an indication of what this club is willing to do and not do. And it was Adu and Arteta um, that pulled the plug on that. You can go and check Tom's articles and shows and read about it. I mean, sensibility has to come into it. And as long as we're not sacrificing building a championship winning team, Danny, I think mm. we'll be fine up against someone like Newcastle. That culture takes a while to kick in. City didn't win their first, what, took them three seasons, did it, to win? They're first after their new ownership. Maybe I'm taking out my ass. They were spending. It's hard to work out because they sold it to the um, that that one bloke um, was he from Singapore or something, and then he had it for a little while, and then he had, then he he sold yes, it. Yes, and then he sold to, it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, they you look back at that and some of the stuff they were doing, which I'm surprised Newcastle haven't done. I mean, you go back and look at the transfers around the Robinho era; they were chucking. Uh, there was that bloke, uh, the um, South American Robinho City. That was a January, right? The Robinho was that a January late thirty plus million? It was a shocker, at, right at the final remember. day. Um, and they bought the player yeah. from Blackburn, Santa Cruz. They spent an absolute yes. fortune on him. That didn't work out. Then they had a uh, had a few How other Brazilians. Him? Santa Cruz. Roque Santa Listen, Cruz. They, they've wasted money over the years. Oh. They've had some duds up there. In, uh, <laughs> they've had to write quite side. a lot off to breakage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they should be thanked. Again, look what's happened. Eddie Howe gave them stability this year. Had they mm. gone for the flash manager, you know, the big name, would they have had the season they did? They were in a transition period, a lot like us. We went for the cheaper option, which has worked out well for us in, in right now. And similarly, Newcastle identified at least, and their fans are so lucky, that the new owner said, we need stability first. And going after Eddie Howe, you could argue that clubs like Leicester whiffed on him, Tottenham whiffed on him, even Chelsea, you know, whiffed on him. That stability, as Arsenal fans, we should realise that's so important because we didn't have it for so long. And players took the piss out of that. And so did uh, execs and managers towards the end. It did. I was. I was looking. At, this is. Uh, I don't want to talk about this too much because it's irrelevant. But Leeds is top three ever managers. One Don Revie. Can't argue with that. Second Gary McAllister. Stat padded. Wow. In, in, in League One and the Championship. Third best David O'Leary. You go back on Wikipedia if you've got an hour. Read through David O'Leary. The history of Leeds United. They kicked him out to get Terry yeah. Van Tell in. O'Leary, look at the positions O'Leary had got them in. I mean, yes, Peter Ridsdale was wasting money on goldfish and flowers, but what David O'Leary did at that club, it is a crime that they didn't maybe go and get him back in again. Lovely man. I only recently found out why some Arsenal fans don't like him. Took Leeds to Highbury. They beat us, stopped us winning the title, and he, and he applauded or something. Well, that whole season was unbelievable, really, wasn't it? I remember being in Leeds what, that year... We lost 1-0. Do you remember at Ellen Road? No. That season. And it was, I want to say it was like April, May, because I, it was 99. It was the year United were going for the treble. And we were in the FA Cup semi-final. We were going to Leeds. We were still well in it. Maybe I'm oh, wrong. the FA Cup I... final where we played Ali Adier up front rather than on resting <laughs> for the Champions League. I was at that game. The windiest game I've ever been at, up in the gods at Villa Park. 
<sighs> well, that game at Leeds was bloody plain for painful because it we lost it, and that was the day where it was a little bit like you know, oh, that was a horrible. That was a horrible. Um, I was touring for a British film at the time, and I just happened to be going through Leeds when we were playing them in that match. And it's so weird. I was on the road for a lot of the end of that season, and I was in a bar in Southampton for the Champions League final between Bayern and Man United. We had just wrapped doing this film festival down there with this little small British film, and it was unbelievable. Was a film called Virtual Sexuality with... Rupert Penry Jones, oh. who you've probably seen in a number of British television shows. He was in a MI5 special agent show that was very popular. Spooks? Yeah. Is that Spooks? Spooks on that BBC. Right? Yep. And Laura Fraser, a wonderful young, uh, not young, not so much young anymore, but she was at the time Scottish actress, um, mm -hmm. who you guys would recognize if you saw them. It was a fun oh. film. It was trying to be like a John Hughes, you know, Breakfast Club, Sixteen uh, Candles type thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, there was an era for that, and I still look back at those films, and I like them. It was a fun film to work on, and uh, it was a great cast. And what's his name was in it? Oh God, young. Oh gosh, you would know him, Kieran O'Brien. He was in a kids show when we were growing up. Oh, a really popular kid. Everyone really loved him. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> so I was in a bar in Southampton, and. Luckily, surrounded by lots of alcohol when United scored those late two goals. That's why I don't remember that season because I've had I've had therapy to block it out. <laughs> I <hit my> therapy <laughs> and acupuncture to get rid of it. Um, what do we realistically need to do to be a top side next season? Because Liverpool will have a bug up their ass. Klopp made a huge mistake by letting Mane go, moving Salah out onto the wing and expecting everything from the two new boys that have never played in the Premier League and then one of them being out mm. injured. He, that was very rarely does Klopp mess up, but he messed up then. But next season, he's, he's going to be angry. Man City are going to have money. <laughs> Newcastle money. Man United are going to probably spend more money on people that can do uh, tips and tricks. Mm. What do you reckon we need to do? Well, this is a great point and a good question because people answer it very differently and they ask it very differently. And my go to is always last season everyone said what are you going to do when everyone else is going to strengthen and be better that did not happen did it no so i think this whole thing about arsenal are going to disappear for the next however many years you know this was it that's i i just don't buy into that at all because i think we're a different club now we're run differently and we have totally different mental um kind of leadership at the very top and when it starts with our manager. And I believe that we will build on what we've got. And you bring up Liverpool, and it's a great example, because sometimes you think removing players and just adding is the way to go. Look, what Sir Alex Ferguson was ruthless. I was talking about this with James Johnston as well. He, did, he was fearless. Yap Stam, you're out. Beckham, out. You know, you're not working out, out. I think we get so attached to players at Arsenal because we haven't won and we're so desperate to win that the players that show us glimmers of great form, hope, we want to hold on to them for as long as possible. Not every Haylender is going to be like Saka. Get rid of Maitland-Niles. You should have sold him two seasons ago. I get it. You wanted to hold on to him a little bit longer. You weren't sure. Fine. Joe Willock, gone. Great deal. That was brilliant. We need to do that again for Reese Nelson. You know what? We can improve on players, and that's what we need to be doing in order to continually be competitive. If we keep buying like for like, now's the time to go for the jugular and bring in a couple of world-class players and plays with a bit more experience. We've seen what Jorginho is able to do coming into the team, playing, you know, just the level of experience he has, the understanding of what it takes to win, whether it's in the dressing room or on the pitch. And, and I'm not, not saying he's a long-term answer. He, he's, huh? yeah, he's, he's not here for a six-month deal. We'll see out his contract of 18 months, and he's a great player. He's going to come in really was, handy in the Champions League next season. Remember when he was playing for, for Napoli or Lazio, the, one of the light blue teams in, in Serie A? He was a, yeah. one of the best players in the league. They say he was yeah. a new Gennaro Gattuso and stuff like that. What a player he was. He's still only 31. God, I wish I was 31. I'll be also, the way the he plays, he doesn't need pace. He's a no, dictator, right? He's it. a conductor. 
And to be honest, I was saying on the show the other day, I said, look, if he comes in and does a job and we win or we don't, but he's helped, great. Would I be upset if he was moved on or someone better came in? No, of course I wouldn't. But I also believe that continuity is important. But saying goodbye to players we like is a good position to be in because we've just wanted, we've given players away for free, Danny, for how mm, long? Too so, long. So, you know, it might be that, do I want to say goodbye to Kieran Tierney? No. No. I don't think he has great value for this team. I think we will be, though. But, you know, um, if that's what we have to do to rebuild and get stronger, that's what we have to do. So I don't think it's – I think it's just the beginning for us. Um, and I think seeing how they've played the game the last two seasons, they've shown us that the business that they've done in the transfer market – is really good in acquisitions. We have to get a little bit better in terms of getting total value for our our um, our players, though. I think that's an area where we can still grow. Oh, sexy Frank has turned up. That's good. Um, expect sexy Frank to come in. I'm going to put this up as a caveat along the bottom of the screen. FIFA is not real life. <laughs> Jeff Jeff Arsenal, 2013. Because <laughs> I'm going to make a, a, a thing. If all the Arsenal, most of the Arsenal players at the moment on FIFA are an 80, an 81, an 82, I don't want Vartessa to go out there and buy an 83, an 84. I want him to go out there and buy 90s, 91s, mm. 92s. And we love El Nenny and we love holding. And he can come in and doing a show. Bye bye. Bye right. bye to them players. <laughs> Au revoir. Don't let, not you. <laughs> there he is. Everybody, the sexy Frank. Hello, Ooh. sexy Frank. <laughs> he hates football. <laughs> Just like Ben White, we like that. We don't mind that. We do. Well. Um, yeah, so we, we want to go out there. And uh, those players, I know I've not watched the show yet, but you did a show with Tom, Buy, Sell, Keep, something like that. Yes. And I've not watched that yet. So I'm, I don't want you to ruin, ruin the plot of it. But I, I imagine you were, you were quite ruthless with Holding, with El Nenny, maybe even Jacker. That's the one I want to listen to and see what you and him said on Jacker. Because there's been talk at the moment about Jacka um, selling Jacka, but you can see why they might want to sell him because mm -hmm. his value is the highest it's ever been at the club. But you can see why mm -hmm. they don't want to sell him because he has been one of our best players this season. But can he transfer that form into the Champions League? I'm not sure he can. And I'd be sad to see him go. But if you have, for example, Thomas Partey, um, Declan Rice and Caicedo, now that is, I think, you're talking about Disney movie now. But <laughs> if you really want to lay down a marker and say to yourself, we're going for it, and you have a midfield of Partey, Rice, Caicedo, Jorginho to come on in the Champions League games, and Xhaka, I mean, that is... Pretty impressive. Get rid of El Nenny, you know. Remove. Hold on. Uh, El Whenever anybody mentions El Nenny, I have to. I have to bring this up. <laughs> all the El Nennies. <laughs> Bless him. Brilliant. That'll be a sad day when the all the El Nennies leave. Yeah. Don't ask He's... about the size of the heads, anybody. <laughs> Danny, I'm Carry cool on. with him to stay at the club because he's doing his badges and he wants to be a coach. I'm yeah. all for that character. He's a wonderful human who's been very good with the younger players. I think it's really important. But you've got to be really careful about removing experience, you know, and taking that Band-Aid off. You think that, look, at Saka's carried this team for two years. It's been so nice to see him this year not have to carry the team. Jesus mm. has contributed, Zinchenko, Martinelli, Xhaka, Odegaard's been phenomenal. Thomas Partey's had his best season, albeit, you know, it's not ended great. But you can't take away the contributions that the players have made already. You can't take away that Eddie came in and did his job for the time period we needed, you know, when Jesus went out injured. Does that mean Eddie's the answer long term for us to win the Premier League? I don't think so. I think that's more of an investment. So we did, he didn't leave on a free because he Eddie isn't going to do it. He's not. And and you know what though, he deserves so much love for for coming in under an, an insurmountable amount of pressure. Jesus was a god at that point and became a cult hero instantly at Arsenal. The reason why we were top of the league was he was leading not only on the pitch, but off the pitch. You know, he showed players what it means to hustle, to play a game 90 minutes plus. And Martinelli became better because of that. 
Saka became better because of that. And Eddie saw it. So when he came into the team, he was ready to go and he was prepared to go. Unlike holding a little bit, I don't know if his preparedness was the same, but Eddie was ready and he delivered. And uh, my God, did we need him to deliver during that time. Now, towards the end, again, you saw Danny, his form went off the boil, right? Yeah. These players that you need to win a title, they don't take their foot off the pedal. And he's not even an impact sub anymore, is he? He's just a sub, which is sad. Yes. He manages the game. He's not a sub that comes on to try and win you a no game. Trossard. Going, oh, shit. And Nketi is coming on. Oh, we're in trouble now. It's, exactly. Uh, they're resting exactly. their players, which is sad because he's got a great yeah. record for under 18, under 21, under 23, and for England under 21. But he is a, a mid-table Premier League striker at best. But with, a with the occasional flash of brilliance. Yes, and Danny, though, if we, I think they're looking at the wrong cashing in, looking to cash in on the wrong player. Mm. I really did. I really believe I'd love to see Balogun get a shot, proper shot for a season. But we're in a world where instant gratification is everything. And right now, Arsenal, I don't think are in the let's give them a shot mode yeah. because we need to kind of really build that momentum. But mm. Tom and I, not to dis, not. Not to ruin the plot, but don't spoil it. Okay, there's <laughs> just look, just have a listen to what we said about the upfront options and what we would do with Eddie and Balogun. It's really interesting stuff. That's a good point you made there about that he's he's not. We, we can't give players chances. We aren't in the Emery days and the Arteta days of the Europa League where Martinelli, Saka, Smith Rowe can come in and make their names for playing against quite frankly, championship level or below teams and, mm -hmm. and have magnificent games and build up your career. You're, if, if players need to come in and do that now, you're playing against, in, in Europe, there's, there's going to be hardly any rubbish teams. Although this season, the uh, all the quarterfinals, I reckon we'd have easily beaten four of the quarterfinals of the Champions League, easily. And I think we beat Milan, I think we beat AC, uh, Inter Milan, I think we beat both of those. We get smashed by Real Madrid and Man City though, but we're getting there. And yeah, these but players we couldn't haven't beat got time to Lisbon. make their name. We couldn't beat... These are the things, though. Yes, maybe. But we still couldn't beat Sporting we Lisbon. We didn't, didn't lose to them, though. We drew twice. No, we didn't. But we couldn't... At the end of the day, on the books, it's going to be, did we yeah, beat but, them? No, we didn't. But Over we're, two did legs. our eye on the league at the time. I think we did. I think our yes, eye... Yes, we did. did. Our belly. Listen, I'm not... I, I was upset we were out of the Europa League. I wanted to win that thing. And uh, I... You know, people came at me because it's like, I'm oh, willing to sacrifice. We haven't won that yet. And you know what? Get used to this. Don't you want to win everything? Pep Guardiola goes for everything. He has the squad to do that. We learned two week, a week ago what it meant, where we have to get to, to win the Premier League. We've caught up with everybody else, but we haven't caught up with Manchester City yet. And if you want to win it, that's the standard. We're not we're not buying players to compete with Manchester. This whole idea of, oh, your rivals are Brighton now, and Wolves, like a season ago, two seasons ago. United fans laughing at us and Chelsea fans laughing at us, right? So what, their rivals this year are, you know, Brighton and um, whoever. Our rival, it's like a golf course, right? A golfer never plays other golfers. A golfer plays the course. In our case... In the Premier League, the course is Manchester City. That's who you have to beat. And until we can get to that point where we can compete, look what's happened. We win one of those games against them, maybe we win the title. We've beaten everybody else this season. We've broken lots of ducks, but they're the ones we have to catch. And you can't do that with Holding and Eddie and Ketia. I'm sorry, you can't. Indeed, you can't. Um, let's go and we've got eight questions, which is really good. We're going to go and ask them because uh, we've only got another 12 minutes. Um, Mr. Bob Lex, what is your favourite Bergkamp goal? Oh, it's like asking which one of your children do you love the most? Although I don't That's have easy. children. I do. Oh. I have Vinnie and Vesper and I could never pick. I don't love it. Um, She's a scumbag. <laughs> No, <laughs> I'll have to change that in case she hears it. Sean, you are my favourite. Unless I had a child that was ginger, then that would be my favourite. I mean, the one that's for me, the, the Newcastle goal, what makes me laugh, people actually still to this day ask if he meant that. And Scumbag. I'm like, come on, are you joking? That was art. 
Uh, as if they'd never monstrous. seen him score a goal before. If you've if you've if you've come from the planet Zog and you've just seen him and go, did he mean that? Well, fair enough, you're allowed to ask that. But if you've seen him play more than one game, you go, he did that kind of stuff all the time. Maybe not mm-hmm. scored the goals, but that kind of he meant to yeah. do this. The trips, that's my favourite, and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one as well because I do like is- the one against. Um, who was the one? Was it in against Argentina in the World Cup, Danny? There was a volley. Oh, that famous one where he's, he's going to the right, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, for Holland. Brilliant. Another player that's yeah, not for us. I like that. I do not like oh, orange. Barry always no. to the rescue right there. Yes. I actually that met a great um, Graham Taylor. Graham Turner. Who was the one who said, do I not like orange? Taylor, right? Yeah. yeah I met him after the, um, <laughs> after I think it was the the League Cup final loss to Chelsea. I met him in the garage. I went, hello, Graham. And he came over and he chat. I said, do you still not like orange? And then before he said anything, I went, oh, my God, I can't believe I said that. He just looked at me and shook his head. <laughs> And he walked off. Oh, I've made a terrible error. Um, another question from Sai. Which player do you think was the catalyst of what's happening? For me, it's Martin Erdegaard. At this point, I would agree. Um, at the beginning of the season, I would say Jesus was the nucleus to all of the good things that were happening. Um, but I think Odegaard has literally put his team on his shoulders over the last few games, man possessed against Newcastle. And uh, something we've talked about with Kev is, you know, a player who sometimes works in the shadows. And I love that phrase because everyone wants Odegaard to be the dazzler, the magician, the wizard of Oz every single match. And I think what goes underappreciated is what he does off the ball a lot. And oh my God, I love him. I literally love him. Like I want him to be my I son. I love him more. I want to. I bet. I bet he smells of vanilla. Oh, oh he just is a door. He and Saka and Martinelli. Those would be my sons. I would love. Imagine Sunday dinner. Imagine a Sunday roast with me, you, Magic Mike, and Saka, Odegaard, and Martinelli. Sunday spend, roast. We just spend the whole time just <laughs> weeping in joy. Um, I'm not highlighting your messages at the moment, people, because I've got the questions tab up. Uh, Boy10 has said, seeing as we don't have the spending power to match City or Newcastle, would it be an, be expedient mm. to focus on our youth and either get proper money for them on the market mm-hmm. or trust them in the team? So... I completely endorse investing in youth all the time. And I would love for a youthful player to emerge every season, but we know how difficult that is, right? Yes, I agree with you. Is this now the time to capitalize on Reese Nelson? Is Reese Nelson going to be a super sub at Arsenal? It's so important that I want us also thinking about the strength of our bench. You know, when you're playing against Liverpool, I think it was the second leg of the League Cup last season, and we're at home, and they bring on Salah and Jota, right? You're playing against City, they bring on Mares and Alvarez. You know, okay. we're going to bring on Reese Nelson every game to change a game. I, I think you could get what thirty million for Reese Nelson. Tell me, Sheffield United wouldn't pay. 30 million for even Eddie and Ketia to be their striker next season. Well, Forrest did, and uh, Forrest went out and spent a whole fortune. I think you've got to break the Premier League up into sections. You've got the top three, you've got the top four, then you've got another group of about six, then you've got another four or five, and then you've got another group of four or five that are fighting relegation. Mm-hmm. You have to look and put that player against that group. Right. Would Reese Nelson do well against the top four or five teams? Maybe, maybe not. The next group down, the Europa League qualifying teams, he possibly mm. could. And all the rest of them, yes, he could. Is that enough reason to keep a player at a club who can be game-changing against half of the Premier League teams? Maybe right. a couple of years ago, yes. Next season, I don't think it is. I mean, he could get better. He is another like Halen, brilliant prospect, and he has got skills. But much like Eddie, he's not doing it game. He's not doing Saka levels. He's not doing Martinelli and Erdogan levels. So he's doing that nearly every game, game in, game out. Now, yeah, of all the ones... Yeah, of all the ones, he seems to have... I don't know what it is about him. I think he's done really well when he's been given the opportunity this year, Danny. You yeah. know, Oh, he saved us, hasn't he? Twice. Yes. So I can see a case for keeping him. But if we really want to cash in, we fail to cash in at the right... Maitland-Niles, $22 million, that deal could have been done, right? And we failed to do that deal. And now look, two years on, what's he worth? Nothing. 
leaving on a free, isn't he? Yeah, that's why we have to be smarter. Matt D'Souza says, would you accept 40 million from Newcastle for Kieran Tierney or would you keep him? It's the age old question, isn't it? I love him. So, listen, I think Tierney deserves a lot more credit for what he has done in a short space of time at the Arsenal. Now, forget the FA Cup win and all that jazz. When he came in at a time, we were acquiring players, Danny, with no Champions League football, right? Credit to the club. We 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 got Aubameyang, we got Lacazette, uh, Thomas Partey, William Saliba, Kieran Tierney, all with Europa League football. No Champions League carrot being dangled. Um, and Tierney had a massive impact culture-wise at Arsenal. We were used to the three stooges of Kalasinac, Ozil, <laughs> And I didn't say that when I was drinking. <laughs> I don't know, I'd have gotten the full Feinberg. <laughs> <laughs> and they certainly didn't smell of vanilla, let me tell you. No, and I didn't. say that with respect. Sorry, they lost their heart at Arsenal, and I get it. You know, th these things happen. However, my God, they were apathetic. You know, in some of the results you see this season, you wonder, my goodness, are we ever coming back to even get a point against Southampton, West Ham? I don't think we are with those players. Right. And Tierney came in at a time and showed the opposite of apathy. He helped and was one of the key players that was in, it, part of that. We're falling in love with Arsenal again, Danny. Tierney was one of the very, very first. And he was our best player for 18 months. And he years. was our best player. If people wanted him as captain, there's no way a player like him becomes surplus to requirements. Mm -hmm. And I, I get Arteta wants to play a certain way. Which but I also working. think he's been humbled a little bit, don't you think, in the last couple of games with Zinchenko being so open at the back yeah. that you're going to need a player like Tierney. He's going to need him, you know, in the Cups or in against certain teams in the Premier League. I would hold on to him. And when Pep Guardiola wants to buy a player, you certainly aren't bloody selling him, is what I say. I love Tierney. And we have seen, like you said, in recent games, the Zinchenko thing doesn't work all the time. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> don't do what Arsene Wenger did and put out the same... If Arsene Wenger could put out the same team game after game because they were all world-class players and then it didn't matter. But I think now when we... I haven't got 11 world-class players. We maybe got four, five. Exactly. Then we have to adapt our tactics and our squad and our lineups for the, each game. And sometimes Sinchenko works and sometimes, my God, it does not work. And Tyranny um, is a top four player team, top four team player. Danny, also, when it doesn't work with Zinchenko, oh, it's like Thomas right. Partey. When Thomas Partey decides to have a bad game, the dude doesn't know how to have a half ass bad game. The, yeah. He stinks up the joint. It's the same with Zinni. He stinks up the joint when he has a bad one. Um, uh, Phil says, where does Sophie sit on keeping tyranny and playing him at left back next season? I think we kind of covered that a little bit. Uh, anything you want to add to that? Do well, the next question. I mean, Zinchenko, people think that we could just throw him into midfield. It's the movement that makes him the play he is being able to go from that left back position, right? The inverted role and how that works. I think movement is about everything as much as it is playing well in that position. I think the one thing that we've missed that many don't talk about is Tommy Yasu and not having had him because he could have plugged in at the left back a little bit too, could have played right back, could have seen Benjamin move back to centre back. Uh, yeah, but um, I think we need the option. So keeping Tierney is important for me. Um, uh, oh, yeah, good one from Boy 10. Uh, are we screwed if Saliba doesn't sign an extension? You know, I've always said to Kevin, this is the one that worries me the most. There's more... There's more for Saka because of his the fact that he's a Haylander. Martinelli feels like he came out of the Hayland, doesn't he? Um, but you could tell, like, Arsenal's his club. Saliba? I'm not sure. And let me ask you guys this, right? It's very hard to find a defender like him. You, the Defenders like him are generational, and we've seen how much we've missed him. But if Real Madrid come knocking and want to pay $150 million for him, you know, I think he's a hunt. If he if he is on the market, I'm sorry, you do not sell him for less than 150. 
if Declan Rice is 100, 120, and we know the market value for British players is ridiculous um, in the UK especially, then what price for Saliba? Sometimes you say, this is where Arsenal again, can you be ruthless enough? Can you take Liverpool, Coutinho-type money and rebuild your team to win the league? Or yes. are you going to waste money like Tottenham and buy mm. duds and do mm. nothing in the league? That's the difference. <clears throat> How do you spend the money and reinvest it? And do you have a plan for who that player or players will be? Have you got time to answer some more questions? Yeah, yeah let's go. Let's Mr. keep Brady. going. It's okay. 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 Um, Paul Nell, not Neil, uh, whilst not moaning about your hat, says, uh, <laughs> thoughts on Glenn Doozy going to Aston Villa? I've not heard this. So um, one of the things I, I don't like, I like referencing kind of what we talk about because it shows a little bit of context. I said to Super Kev, I can see Emil Smith-Rowe going to Aston Villa and being reunited with Emery. I could see him getting a Genduzzi. He was very hot on him. Um, you know, regardless of what you think about him, maybe you, whether or not he's a punk, uh, he's a good player. I think it would be a good move for him if he wants to get back into the Premier League and he's playing for a manager who has been absolutely sensational since taking over at Aston Villa, uh, let's be honest. Said, I was on a um, an Aston Villa pod and they asked me about um, uh, Emery. I said, he'll save you from relegation, he'll get you into Europe, but he will bore the arse of you while doing it. <laughs> and he is a manager to steady the ship, make you good, bring some players in, and then after that, you're going to want more. It's going to be the Alan Kerbishley Charlton Athletic thing where you're going to go, we want more, more. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for because before you know it, you'll be back in the championship. Just keep him boring football. People like him. He has got an amazing pedigree. Probably in, in modern football, he has probably got the best you know, Europa League pedigree of any manager. Well, he must have won it five times. Four times. Arsenal. The only time he didn't was with us. Yeah, magnificent. And he'll do that again for Aston Villa. And I like seeing Villa do well. I have Me no too. problem with Villa. I like the ground. I like the fans. I like, I like, I like the kit. I like the history. I like some of the play. Loads of the players. We've got we've got loads of players. I mean, Paul Merson played for them and 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 things like that. So, um, yeah, good luck to them. But they were but, fun to watch when we were in the, you know, the Peter With teams and the Paul McGraths. And, I mean, you could oh, go back Irish to Nathan. Shaw. Up front, do you remember Shaw? Yeah, Long Paul Ted? Shaw. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Paul Ryder, really fun to watch. Gordon yeah. Cowens, who ended up both going to Bari, and then Nigel Spink was there. Gosh. Martin Keown. Yeah, oh, I'll see the Keown was there. What other ones have we could go on all day? Like, we're not here to talk about. <laughs> <this. laughs> uh, Russ Morgan has put a question in. He says, mm. uh, "Summer transfer window. Who do you buy a right back and centre back?" Question mark. Yes and yes. Or in the back. I would both. like for us to buy midfielders, two midfielders. I would like a centre back and I would like a right back. Now, assuming Tom, Tommy Asu, I won't say it, is, it, is he going to be an injury prone, prone player? Because he is one of those just does his job player that you need in a team. He is... And I say this, don't get upset with me, everyone, but truly, he's like Phil Neville. And I mean that, uh, uh, and I'm being serious about that. Phil Neville didn't get enough credit at Man United. He was almost like the jack of all trades and master of none, but was he was this hy <laughs> hybrid player, though, that plugged in, right, and he did his job. Never complained, never moaned, just did his job. And Tommy Asu is that player. He doesn't complain. He'll play right back. He'll play left back. He'll even play left centre back and he'll do his job. And I think that we need to make sure that he's not going to be like unavailable to us next season. So I think we need cover at the back uh, in the middle. And dare I say, I would like to see us by a striker. Phil says David Platt, of course. The made his debut at Highbury wearing a goalkeeper's kit. I also miss the semi final FA Cups at Villa Park. You can't beat that. No, but you've got to pay for that that dive that is Wembley. If anyone in the from not from the UK who's never been to Wembley, you think, oh god, the greatest stadium in the England. No, <laughs> no, it is a single a little road to get there for an industrial estate. That new Wembley should have been built in the Midlands in a massive big field, not in London. 
horrible, horrible place. You're going past people Tube's with a uh, nightmare too. Oh, every aspect of it is terrible. Yeah. Maybe a nice stadium, but not where it is. Um, Stephen Feely asks, how much would you take for ESR? Hold on, maybe Stephen's no, here. He's Stephen is our designer. He's our creative director at the Highbury Squad with our swag. He's an amazing I was human at his being. Avatar thinking, I like that. He's got some great stuff, you guys. He's got cool Emil Smith Rowe t shirt, Sacco. He's got Leah Williamson. Did you sell um, them? Please. Yeah, yeah. I'll put Fees, it in, the link in the chat, Steve. I'll, I'll yeah. give it. Yeah, put it in the link. Put it in the link. Yeah. <laughs> He's wonderful. Really cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 30 million I'll take for ESR. But do you think we, he's, I think he's done. I, I mean, think, you uh, know, you know, you're done when you're four nil or three, one down to Man City and then you bring him on against that. I mean, what's he going to do? But also That's not bring him on in other games where we could have got a goal and he got 10 last season and he did off the bench as well. And there's something gonna... not either not right about him after his surgery. There's something that's, there's a, the way he talks about Emil Smith Rowe too is harsh. Hmm. It's quite sad. disparaging. I mean, when when you when you see Fabio Vieira play in the the ESR role, then and then he gets subbed off you. You must look at your career and go, done. And what a shame I, that is. I think it's a shame that he because Vieira's had what two good games. If How that. is it you can't go back to trusting Emil when he was so fundamentally important last season? Something's off. And I don't know, and I can't maybe, say what it is. Maybe conspiracy theory. He wants to get the 10 off <laughs> Erdegaard. You heard that here first? I just made that up. Um, Boy 10 has got another question. Is the Premier League actually becoming the Super League? And what are the chances of foreign clubs buying spots in the English football pyramid? Uh, do you have Barcelona last week were complaining they might go and join another league? <laughs> Listen, that? no sympathy for them. Well, how pathetic, right? <laughs> They're like Just, a spoiled brat. Oh, my gosh. Throw your toys out the pram. No one cares. Um, the Premier League, bless you, Tony. Uh, the Premier bless League you. has, uh, yeah, I think what Danny said earlier, there's chunks. The Premier League's made up of maybe three chunks now. And you could also argue that there's now eight, right? So people are talking about the top eight versus the top six. Um, but as for foreign clubs sort yourselves out sort your own leagues out <laughs> you know the the premier league became the premier league with a tv deal in 92 and a tremendous amount of sponsorship money and barclays coming in those things marketing changes everything money helps barcelona have been irresponsible and dictatorial with theirs no sympathy whatsoever they could go play in the um pub league for all i care I mean, people. If people are, are newish to to supporting Arsenal, back in the day, Barcelona was so bad. It was a running joke. They'll take your mm -hmm. player and then they'll pay you in instalments over the next ten years. They owed us so much money for Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. They gave us Cesc Fabregas as as payment for him. We're, we're taking him anyway because their laws over there meant you couldn't give a professional contract to a player of a certain age. But in this country, we were a year younger and we could. So that's how we kept nabbing them all. And just endless. that They buy a player it, and then not pay him and then try and give him back and then swap players and yeah. swap deals. It's just, they're a scumbag club. They're like your mate who always wants to borrow a tenner and you know you're never getting it back. <laughs> <laughs> Look what they did. Look how, I mean, some you could say it's clever, right, Danny? They, I never think, I never thought they had any intention of actually really wanting a Bamiyang. What they saw was an opportunity because we were too dumb, right? They took a Bamiyang. Then they sold him. For 30 million to Chelsea. This is, I mean, the desperation of this club right now and the whole messy thing and the saga of who cares? I mean, literally, you have been savage, stealing, taking, tapping clubs and players for years. Cry some more. I mean, like they stole Petit offers and then sent sold it to Chelsea the next Cleb. year over they Mars. Even took Cleb. They, took, they even took Cleb of us. <laughs> they, over Mars, one of our best players at the time, four years he went there for, won absolutely nothing. They take oh, players, yeah. they ruin them, and then the players end up getting a T-shirt saying, I, I used to play for Arsenal. Just mentioning more T-shirts with uh, possible things. 
um <laughs> you let me know when you gotta go because there's four more questions to go let's do um, all the questions let's give the people what they want it's, uh, it's like gladiator are you not entertained to watch the director's <laughs> cut of that it was 270 minutes long or 170 one of the two loved it loved great it. film brought that's what although russell crowe poo pooed it the other day he did, Poo-poo. and the director did yeah I mean... made me sad i mean when i tell you in my top 10 films gladiator rocky four predator and uh, the greatest showman people think i'm taking the piss the greatest showman would bring a tear to my eye every single and i don't even like musicals when that woman sings i go oh, hold my hand <laughs> <laughs> and sean thinks it's hilarious Okay, oh, here, I can't. I I love that. I love the song from that. I am not a big musical fan, nope, and I, I really didn't enjoy having to work on the Rogers and Hammerstein um, DVD releases because you yeah. know that once DVD came out, you remastered everything and re-released it. And I was the only musical I love, like love, and can watch over and over is Chicago. That is one hot musical. Ooh. I saw BBC did Les Miserables, and I quite enjoyed that. I enjoyed the story, but I'm going to watch the version where, um, uh, what's his name, Wolverine is singing in it. I mean, I don't know how Wolverine got into uh, a musical. Good. But uh, I hope he gets his claws out and rips stuff up, but that would be interesting. Chirobi, a friend of mine, uh, once rang him up and spoke to him for an hour about my dodgy neck. Turns out Chirobi <laughs> is damaged vertebrae, not that thing that you said, which it oh. might be. Yes, taxi drivers for you and speed bumps. Thank you very much. Jerobi says, are we worried about a 22-year-old with structural deficiencies leading to an adverse change in discs of the lower back? Oh, listen to you. He's he's a a spine and he'll get you and he'll... (coughs) Not a stropodist, but he knows and his dad's an expert as well. Um, Out another way or another way... Could be Saliba could be permanently injured like Ledley King. I don't think anybody really knows, do we? But it's it's not good. Listen, Ledley King was probably the one of the and I don't care who played for Tottenham. I think that guy could have player. been one of the best. He was a great player. And and Fabio Capello chose him for a World Cup knowing that he could just play one game. He said it would be worth it if that guy could just play one game. Um Kev talked about this. I didn't did you know Kev had a back injury? Um early on in no. his yeah he and he said that it was really scary and it took a lot of time to recover from touchwood kev didn't really suffer um from injuries too much in his career uh but yeah the back is serious and i never thought about it as deep as this but i think it's a great point and a brilliant question and um we saw our, our wonderful jack and if people want to go and find mm-hmm. out one of my favorite podcasts sofa's done Go and look, go to the Highbury Squad on YouTube and type in Jack Wilshire. That is an interview with the legend, one of my favourite ever players, Jack Wilshire. And he is open and honest the entire thing. And I've watched it twice. And it is wonderful. And you don't get enough Thanks, credit Danny. for getting people like that on your show. Because that Thanks. is how that hasn't got 100,000, 200,000 views. You lot need to sort your lives out. <laughs> I just lift up my right shoulder then. That was having none of that. You lot need to sort your lives out. <laughs> Use the left hand. and I, can I like point. that. Uh, Russ Morgan asks um, oh no we did that one sorry Russ um, Albert right while Albert is here I'm going to put up this because Albert is German and I like to acknowledge him <laughs> like, I don't need to do this for Mike Hertz when he comes on I have a little Mexican flag and a Canadian one for Jeff so Albert although he lives in Austria that, says how much will Cronky in mm. Cronky's involvement bring us concerning the trusty deal I don't see him staying on Aston trusty player of the season for Birmingham. Yeah. I mean, you brilliant. know, he's he's been brilliant. Do you send him out on loan again? Keep him there for another season? See how things shake? I don't know if Arteta's ready to put Austin Trusty in uh, in our team. So maybe um, a Premier League loan? But, but I think another loan and get more value out of him. You know, add more add more value to his market dollars. But in terms of the US men's national team who I cover... Uh, for various tournaments and um he has been in the squad for the last couple uh teams uh team call up so he's definitely someone that's on the radar here and everyone here has earmarked him as one for the future i don't know what we're going to do with him i haven't seen enough of him to be honest hmm. 
Jerobi is actually a chiropractor. See, I was close. I was very close. I've got a friend who's a chiropractor. Yeah. And did wonders with my, he's the reason why I can move my neck now. It took him a year of constant thumbs in my neck and teaching me how to hold my head properly. Because people, your yeah. head weighs an absolute ton. Don't do this the whole time. No, posture is terrible. It is. And when you're round like me, it's, it's quite hard not to be round. <laughs> But also, um, I feel like when I stand up straight, it's kind of uh, like you're trying to, you know, your boobs just go, you just want, tell me about you know, it. you don't want people, people to think, oh, my boobs are just, I'm just pointing my boobs at everyone. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes a, a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to point my boobs at anyone anymore. You no. know, I'm off the market. So <laughs> no, the tiny would have words. Yes. Uh, Rancid Pumpkin says, great show. Thank you, Danny and Soph, but I have to leave. Darby Della. Oh, I love Madonna. that he called it the Darby Della Madonnina. Yes, yes. Is it Madonnina or Madonna? I guess I always think about Madonna. But... I'm an Inter, I'm Inter fan and I will hopefully have time to go and watch that game. Forza Inter. I actually put Mike uh, Hertz on a timeout the other day because he mentioned AC Milan. And then he, he showed it to his wife. <laughs> he said, I've been back. I've been timed out for <laughs> five minutes. Um, oh, Can you Patrick imagine Johnson's if GQ, GQ Giroud makes it to another European final? That dude, wow. That is, it's not quite Ibrahimovic levels of long gen, long gen, living a long time, 41, and still doing it. I mean, he, he came on and played the game, uh, um, Ibrahimovic, and then they haven't seen him since. But my God. I and mean, I know you're thinking in your head, you're watching that Golf LA Galaxy just like I am. We're just not going to mention it. <laughs> going to mention uh, any of that. So, and then final question is from Archangel. What is the Fabio role? Why did we buy him? Oh, my God. Here we go. This could take an hour. <laughs> for, Calendar. For Just like Fabio. with the, Every time I think I think of the Fabio with the long blonde hair. I think hair. of James Johnson's hair. <laughs> <laughs> I think Fabio is a failed... Okay. I'll take a step back. Deep breath, Soph. Don't be that. Don't be Sophie two seasons ago. Um, I don't think it's worked out just yet. And he is a $35 million investment. And to be honest with you, I expect $35 million players, pounds, euros, however much it was, to come in and be able to have impact on the team. And I don't think he has had any. He's got one great goal. And he's had, what, two, maybe 1.5 good games. And we paid a lot of money for him. I know he was good for Portugal under 20 uh, ones or whatever. They won the Euros. He's the captain. I know all of that. But just not impressed so far. I mean, his stats in uh, Liga Noz last season were spectacular, considering he didn't start the season out that well. And But sometimes you look at a player and you go, you haven't got the build to be a Premier League player. You may have, uh, have skills, but sometimes you come and play in the big boys league, then things are going to get hard. And then sometimes you just see people's hearts aren't in it, which is... Uh... Do, you, do you think that though, Danny? Because Bernardo Silva's slight and David Silva was small and slight. I don't... I mean, I'm not sure I buy into that. He, The the kind of skinny guy syndrome. Well, you, you turn Saka and ESR, they both had the similar problems. And now look at them. You ain't getting off the ball for love nor money. Partly because ESL mm. doesn't play, you can't get the ball off him because he doesn't have the ball. <laughs> but, uh, hopefully, I've seen, I've watched you go onto YouTube and look at Pavio Biera and just go and have a look at the stuff that he can do. There is a player there, but it's whether he can winkle that player out of him before that player's time is up. And hopefully, he does because, like you're saying, 35 million. That could, you could you could do a lot with 35 million. But here's what I like about Mikel as well. Right? Has he played a game since he stank up the joint? A few weeks, uh, three weeks ago. No. No, he's been on the naughty step. He's been, and I like that Arteta eventually, when he doesn't trust anymore, you're on the naughty step. And like uh, whenever Arteta talks to Zinchenko, Arteta keeps turning his head and looking at the naughty step. <laughs> Zinchenko. <laughs> going, <coughs> naughty step, Zinchenko, naughty step, Zinchenko. <laughs> You need oh, to be more man. disciplined, young man. But again, like I always say, so if we knew the first thing about football, we wouldn't be sat here talking to each other. I'd be managing Inter Milan in the Champions League semi-final. That's where I'd be. And after I'd go out into the some warm square in Italy and I'd be eating pizza and talking to ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd be saying, so if you want to come on the yacht this weekend, you know, yeah. we're... Uh, I'm saying yeah. bye. I'll come be in and... LA within the hour. It's a rocket <laughs> run. I bought it off of uh, Jeff Bezos. 
Anyway, do you know uh, what's really funny? I found it very humbling when our yeah. guest I spoke to yesterday talked a little bit about what you've just said, right? Yeah. And in my mind, I was like, mm, how do I worm my way out of this as a YouTube, uh, a broadcaster? Yeah. Well, I'm a, yeah. you know, I'm, I just call myself a YouTuber. I should have said broadcaster journalist, right? But because yeah, you are, um, you were doing that before you did YouTube. I was, I was thinking, man, he thinks this and he's so close to everything we're talking about. So he knows. Yeah. So I always, though, say this is what we do for a living. We talk about shit. That's what we do. I mean, we write and we talk about it. And some fans are like, oh, you're so easy to say that now. Well, no, I actually have to do a show or write a piece now about what we've just seen. So, and that is fluid. Just like sexuality these days, even broadcasting <laughs> and journalism is fluid. <laughs> I've changed my sexuality 14 times during this show. And one, <laughs> one of those, I was a furry and I loved every second of it. Right, that's You'd make it. a great We're fairy. Done. <laughs> thank you very much sophie tell people if god you all know there's no point telling them but tell them anyway where can they find you <laughs> on on the wonderful world the cesspool that is twitter and, and a little bit about your podcast and say so anything you've got coming up soon because you are one of my Indeed. favorite people and you're one of my favorite podcasts well you are one of my favorites and you oh, know i probably up. wouldn't even be doing <laughs> this if it wasn't for you i love telling the story every time and i will tell it every time Danny was the first person to believe in me. Jeff Arsenal, by the way, was also yeah, he put us in touch. one that put us in touch. Um, and uh, he's been a huge supporter from day one. And what I like about Danny, he'll tell me, he goes, oof, he goes, you were a little bit off today. Or, oof, you were great. Oh, I like that. He's always well, more been. More often it's great because you're, very, <laughs> you're never off. I, always, I say, I'll send you a WhatsApp and go, I enjoyed that pod. That was really good. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and I hope like Burkamp Wonderland is just a legendary, you know, um, just like Ars Blog and Burkamp Wonderland, and of course, Axe and Giles over at Guna Ramble. Um, yeah, I mean, just really great content started things that were needed and fans were looking for, and you've always been so supportive of me, so I appreciate that. Give us a shot at Highbury Squad. We did a really good show with Jason Cundy. On uh, before the I Chelsea like game, him and I shouldn't Spurs and I know. Chelsea. He's got that face that I like, but I won't go. To, he was he was married to someone who's now all over talk radio, and whenever she's on, I cannot watch it. I yeah. turn it off. I know. Who you're me up. About. Yeah, Jason is a really top shelf um, human, and another one who's been just really supportive. And you know, he was really complimentary about the Arsenal, and the and again. He's one of those, he goes, how can you argue with what you're seeing in front of you? Of course, I've taken the piss out of you for years, and, and we know that that's part of the shtick. But it's a really good piece. We did one with Warren Barton before Newcastle, which was really interesting as I well. I like him as well. I mean, yeah, he, might, he, was, he was there in the glory days for Newcastle, wasn't he? I'd walk on broken the glass to sign for Arsenal. Did he say that? <laughs> I think he did. <laughs> Lovely, good-looking chap as well. I mean, he's getting on a bit, but he's a bit of a silver fox now. He's, uh, he is, and he's living, he's not too far, he's in San Diego, he's doing coaching. His son actually is at Inter Miami playing for Phil Neville. Um, he's in the system over at Inter Miami, but Warren, top shelf guy, and he was giving Kev stick about Gabrielle, and is he going to be able to defend, you know, the Newcastle boys? And let me tell you, we might clip that and give him some shit for it just because it was glorious. <laughs> Kev was like, what are you talking about? So getting that player player thing sometimes is a lot of fun. And there'll be a very special piece coming out later on this week. Um, look out for it that we did. My Kev and no I did one else an interview. Will get this guest on. Yes. I don't think so. No. I don't well I've seen, hey. I've seen one or two short, very 30 second, one minute interviews with this person. Yeah. And yeah, they're not someone who's ever in the media talking like you think they would be. No. It's really special. And we have Peter Lewis, who I did an interview with about three weeks ago, who is a part of our Talented Gooners series in the next episode. He's an astrological photographer, astronomy photographer. And as you know, I love doing those kinds of shows. And Peter's been a fan for many years, um, has memorabilia from the double winning side in 71. Uh, so look out for that. That will be a great piece that's coming up. So we do a little bit of everything. Um, and uh, yeah, I appreciate the invitation to talk. This has been a lot of fun. 
love it it has indeed and yeah i'm back doing lots of podcasts again now which is good and if people have been a little bit you mentioned the the universe so if anyone thinks it's, it's what's the point of it all go to youtube find a video put the universe and entropy and then realize <laughs> everything is pointless <laughs> <laughs> right that's it we're done um i'm now going to go and tap up some other people that i haven't podcasted in for a very long time we are oh, back okay. on thursday with uh carl and ellis and no one else has bothered replying yet so god knows who else to be there might even have to be me and do 100 shows in a row sophie you have been wonderful how are the dogs they are epic Vinny and vesper are just wonderful i just oh they're just so cute and adorable literally you know bark their way through yesterday's interview but that's okay luckily good. our our guest they're letting was fine you know they're there and how's tony <laughs> good tony is doing much better thanks to everyone for all the love there um i really appreciate it. it's still a bit of a long road ahead but you know what we're in a much better place now than we were two or three months ago so thank you and i take it kev is good super kev is an super. absolute legend yeah, cool. um He'll be on, I think he's doing talk. So I did talk sport breakfast. I'll post that for everyone. Kev is on BBC Five Live, I think, Friday. I'll let everyone know, but he's epic. And tomorrow night, we're back live with Kyle Campbell for our total football show, which is a little bit different. It is. It's good. It's. Um... I leave like a Greek person. And you Right, so say goodbye to everybody, and then I will roll the credits. Au revoir. Thanks for having me. As soon as I scored that goal, I was fucking livid. Get down, dog. Splendid business. He nearly caught the bloody thing. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I've just eaten a full quiche. Well, you don't often see him at him. So when you see him in the supermarket, they need to be swagged, microwaved immediately, and get the brown sauce on and bosh, Bob's your uncle. Never in doubt.